Uh, Steve, do you have anything to report back? Uh, good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Uh, the Council is in closed session this evening on two items, conference with real property negotiator and conference with labor negotiator, and there's no action to report on either item. Thank you very much. Um, would you please do the roll call list? Yes. Council members Singleton? Here. Payne? Present. Campion? Present. Cruz? Present. Howard? Present. Okay, we're going to have some silent prayer and then the flag salute. Um, how about having the chief lead us in the flag salute today? Since you've got all your explorers out there. <laughs> Could you please read the video statement? <laughs> this meeting of the Galt City Council is being videotaped in its entirety and will be cablecast with uninterruption on Metro Cable 14, the Government Affairs Channel, on the Comcast and Sherwest cable systems. <clears throat> Tonight's meeting can be seen on Channel 14 and will also be webcast at www.sucmetrocable.tv this Friday and Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Tonight's meeting can also be seen via live video streaming on the city's website at www.ci.galt.ca.us. A DVD copy is also available for checkout from any library branch. Members of the audience wishing to address council should fill out a speaker identification form and give it to the clerk. Please speak into the microphone when addressing council and state your name for the record. Thank you. Council, do we have any agenda approval, additions, and or deletions? Only three of them this time. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Okay. Um, now we have the police department explore recognition presentation. 
Good evening, Council and Mayor. Uh, tonight, I'm going to introduce Detective Richard Small, who's going to uh, give you a briefing as far as on the uh, Explorer Post 273. Good evening, Mayor, Council members. Uh, thank you for allowing us to be here this evening. Um, I represent the Gulf uh, Police Department Explorer Post number 273. Uh, we are about 20 strong right now. And our focus is on uh, providing kind of a the insight into law enforcement training for uh, the youth of Gaul ages 14 to 21. Uh, it's our opportunity to see if they want a career in law enforcement and to uh, gain some valuable experience before they attend a uh, approved academy. So, uh, with your permission, uh, a couple of our explorers would like to come up and talk about the uh, competition that they participated in uh, last month. Great. Hi, my name is Logan Aguirre, and I'm the leader of the Galt Police Explorer Program. And I'm here to talk about some of the trophies that we won at a Stockton Police Explorer Pro, uh, competition. And in this competition, we went through scenarios that police officers deal with on a daily basis, such as a traffic stop, vehicle search, building search, a felony traffic stop, and an active shooter. And out of, they had 11 scenarios at the competition, and we placed nine. We placed in nine of the, comp in the yeah. scenarios, and we also got second overall. So we got 10 trophies at the Stockton Police Corps program, and we competed against two CHP teams, two Stan County Sheriff's Department teams, San Joaquin County, Elk Grove Police Department, and one more. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the competition was really fun. It was really informational. It helped me learn more about what police officers do daily and how, how to do them, the steps to follow. And thank you. Uh, my name is Noah Butler. I am uh, I'm just an a explorer. With, I'm not in any leadership position now. Um, if you have uh, any questions about any of the trophies or any of the uh, particular scenarios, I can answer them. I can describe what we did or what we had to do to um, to you know, win what we did. So if there's, yeah, you have a little bit of you do. Very good. <laughs> Just a little note, I think that you guys are all leaders in your own right. You're uh, great leaders for the city of Galt, and don't forget that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. So the, uh, the competition was based off of uh, senior officers that, or, um, I'm sorry, it was based off of what officers um, deal with sometimes on a daily basis. And so we had a traffic stop, we had a vehicle search, an active shooter, a building search, DUI stop, a medical scenario, and a disturbance call. And as uh, Logan said, out of the 11 that, were, um, that we competed in, nine of them we placed. It says on the trophies, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, we got a microphone right here. Paula, we got Paula, the microphone right here. <laughs> okay, so we got third place in the uh, police information, which was uh, Logan's doing. He, did that. <laughs> he had to uh, relay information from a crime scene investigation that we had done the previous night, and he was um, in charge of telling the media what we had done. And so we got third place in that, and we got second place in the DUI stop, um, second place in the subject stop. First place in vehicle search, first place in the active shooter, wow. the um, second place overall, the first place in the building search, second place in the team obstacle course, third place in the nighttime traffic stop, and the third place in the felony vehicle stop. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions regarding what we did there? How, how long was the competition? Was it? It was over the it was over the course of three days. It three was days. A, oh, okay. a weekend event, so it went from Friday till Sunday. And on Friday, we did most of the nighttime things. And um, Saturday was the really long day, where it was <laughs> <laughs> had to get up really really early. We weren't back at the PD until about nine or ten o'clock. So, but then Sunday was the easy day where we just um, we were given the awards and. 
we got all those, and we were very surprised. Well, you should yeah. be very proud. Yeah. So, yeah, that's an excellent job. Excellent yeah. job. Can I ask a question yeah. there? Yeah, right. go ahead. Um, let me ask you something real quick. You mentioned something about, uh, well, first of all, you, you guys were in the top five on all the trophies, which, which yeah. is awesome. Uh, one of the medical uh, you said uh, you placed in, right? So medical scenario? Yeah. We did not place in that one. Right? You didn't. Oh, okay. Okay, because okay. now so as explorers, then you are CPR and first aid trained. Yes, is that correct? Uh, a lot of us are. We went through the, uh, the community emergency response team. Yes, we went sir. through that yeah. training. Okay. And we were certified at the, was it the first level? Uh, be we're yeah, we were certified by the American Red Cross to treat first aid yeah. and uh, PBR. They turn those around now. It's level mm -hmm. three. And then level three, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's what I had. Thank okay. you. Congratulations. Thank you. All of you look very sharp tonight. Well, we, wanna, we do want to thank you on behalf of the city of Gulf. You're a great representative of our city, Absolutely. and we're very proud of each and every one of you, and you will all probably be leaders one day real soon. So thank you very much. Thank you. That means a lot. And also, uh, if I may, real quick, you there, uh, the police department and Detective Smalls and uh, Sergeant and uh, Officer Carter back there, I've got to thank them too for their showing these gentlemen how it's done and giving them leadership and mentorship. So thank you guys. Yeah, very you're much. great. I appreciate it, Chief. Thank you so much. Okay. Just to add a little bit to this, uh, I know two of the individuals out there that. They've uh, reached their age as far as being 21, and they're currently testing uh, <laughs> and in the testing process for agencies within the area. Okay. Awesome. That is great. Right. Good deal. Great. Glad to hear that. Um, we're in public comment now, Liz. Okay. Under Government Code Section 54954.3, members of the public may address the Council on non-agenda items. Speakers may address Council on any agenda item during consideration of the item. Speakers shall restrict their comments to issues that are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the City Council and limit comments to a maximum of three minutes. Please fill out a speaker sheet located on the table inside the entrances to the Council Chambers and forward the completed speaker sheet to the Clerk. Daniel Hansen. Sorry, I have to put it a little bit higher. Um, yeah, my name is Daniel Hanson, and my, my concern is uh, about one month ago we were talking about wastewater. We were saying that we're, uh, not wastewater, regular water, and we were saying we're in stage two. Every morning still, not every morning, but Tuesdays and Thursdays still in front of City Hall. There's plenty of pictures, and in front of Fairsight School. I have went to the office here and complained about it. We are flooding the ground. Little mini rivers are going right down and there's hundreds of gallons that we are throwing away but yet we are giving people warnings for getting the sidewalk wet. This is something that is a big concern because if we're going to find the people we're supposed to lead and show people we're able to do it, the city hall is able to do it, but we're not. City hall is flooding and if somebody else's floods we are finding them. Thank you very much. That's all I have for public comment. Okay. Well, I, I think, you know, I think, has anybody looked into that since the last meeting? I mean, yeah. Well, I know the uh, Fairside School was the one that was brought up previously, and that's actually not the city of Galt. That's the, that's the school district's responsibility, and we have talked to the school district to make sure that they're, they're addressing that. At the, last, at the last meeting, when I came forward, I asked some meetings, sorry, sorry, to correct myself, uh, I Mr. Hanson, you're supposed to come up here. Sure. I, I addressed Council and Steve that we are flooding at 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock in the morning right here in front of City Hall. And at that time, I said it was about 200 gallons of water that we are wasting. And that's a rough estimate because I'm just going from what a bathtub looks like. You know, I figured that's 30 gallons of water. And it's, it's plenty. In fact, you cannot drive through the parking lot here in City Hall at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning out here. Yes, I catch the early commute to Sacramento, so I, I'm a very good witness, and I've taken pictures of it. And it, 
you can't drive there without getting your car wet because it, the whole area is completely flooded. The whole driveway going across into the drain. Yeah. Well, I wasn't. I wasn't finished. The first first one was the Fairside School, and that's the one that I was addressing. And then the City Hall one. I know we've asked our staff to to look into. So maybe ask uh, Mr. Winkler to see if. Um, We've yeah, we have been quite busy going to all of our parks and uh, various medians and landscape and lighting uh, frontages throughout the city and adjusting time clocks. Uh, apparently the adjustments that were made here at City Hall need some further tweaking so uh, continue to remind us and be our eyes and ears out there and we certainly want to lead by example and uh, 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 we've got like literally hundreds of timers all over the city so we're trying to get it right at, on all fronts and we'll keep working at that. I don't think that it's really, it, you guys are watering out there roughly about an hour. And, and that's a guesstimate because I wait, I'm out there, my bus leaves at 5.20 in the morning. So it, it's roughly about an hour and that's a, a guesstimate that I'm giving. But it's the way the sprinklers are, are going. It's the sprinklers are pointed towards the middle, towards the middle of the street and not towards the lawn. And I think that's where the waste is coming from because it, the sprinkler goes off of the lawn onto the sidewalk out into, towards the street. Sorry, I know my time is up. I no, that's all right. I, and I'm sure it'll by in the next two weeks it definitely will be there. Thank you. Okay, wait. Where am I? Uh, okay, we're at the information and consent calendar. Since there was uh, no poll, would you please read the three, Liz? I will. The first item, approval of the minutes of the special and regular meetings of August 19, 2014. Number two, approval of the City of Galt Warren. Mm -hmm. And number three, surplus computer donation to Galt Police Activities League. Do I have a motion to approve? With consent. Okay, uh, second? Second. Okay. Call for the vote, please, Liz. Vice Mayor Singleton? Aye. Councilmember Payne? Aye. Councilmember Campion? Aye. Councilmember Cruz? Aye. Mayor Powers? Aye. Unanimous? Thank you. Now we're at the strategic plan update. I'll read the. Uh, goal and then I'll call whoever is involved. <laughs> okay. Can we have the first page of it? Okay. One of our first three year goals is to enhance and maintain infrastructure and facilities and the public works director uh, ensure completion of the Chibola Center HVAC. I guess that's me. Uh, we're pleased to announce that the, um, the units are in and are working. Uh, uh, they were undergoing final testing last week and uh, so we have uh, before the end of summer we do have the HVAC units that are rebuilt and uh, that includes um, new blowers and the replumbing of some of the heating units as well. So we pretty much should be good to go and that is a, a vital component of our uh, emergency plan for cooling centers in the event that they're needed for the community. So we're very happy to have that work done. Great. Thank you very much. And it's you again, the Public Works Director. Finalize plans, bid and recommend to the City Council for action an award of contract for construction of the Fallen Heroes Memorial. We are in the design phase of a fast track design project for that and uh, um, OmniMeans uh, is doing that work for us. They gave us a very competitive bid and we um, hope to be bringing back recommendations for um, advertising and, and ultimately awarding a contract to get that work done and the goal is to have that work done and have a, a ceremony uh, commemorating the second anniversary of that uh, which should be just after New Year's. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, now we're at the Enhanced Economic Development. Steve, Bush. Thank you. Uh, and that's the city manager, <laughs> pursue and promote loca locating Delta College south of Galt and north of Liberty Road and report the salt results to the city council. All right, well, the, the, the good news is the work continues and we received word uh, within the last couple of weeks that they're continuing to pursue their due diligence of the Liberty Road site adjacent to the city of Galt. So they seem serious about moving forward with evaluating the potential for a, a Delta College campus, uh, the city of Galt. So we're excited about the possibilities. Great, good news, thank you. Next, 
Uh, we're going to improve financial stability and the Parks and Recreation Director will present to the City Council for consideration a recommendation regarding use of EBT, Electronic Benefit Transaction Cards, at the Galt Market. We will be uh, presenting a uh, staff report under Parks and Recreation, uh, unless you'd like us to handle the staff report now. Uh, we'll listen to it later. Okay. That's okay with you. Good? Okay. Um, and the next one? We have nothing on that but uh, to report because everything is on target, but we want to attract, develop, and retain quality employees. Okay. And last but not least, we want to enhance cultural and youth activities. The Parks and Recreation Director will present to the City Council for Action a plan to facilitate the appropriate use of the skate park, including facility improvements and activities. We, um, along with uh, PAL, Parks Rec Department, uh, held an event in July, um, basically an open house trying to meet and greet with the skaters that are at the park. Um, I want to say that it's been successful. Um, calls for services have been down in the last month and a half. Uh, we've been talking to the kids, actually, you know, getting to know them and asking them to self-police out there because we were having so many problems and we wanted to make sure there was a place uh, for them to skate. But we're currently looking at getting estimates to expand the cement area and possibly um, uh, adding more equipment. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So as you... Uh -huh. so some people may not know what PAL is and I just want to say it's Police Act Activities League in case they're not aware of what PAL stands for. Great. Thank you. Um, and as you can see, through all of uh, our highlighted items, we're moving right along. So I think that uh, says something very good for everyone that's working on these. Okay, now the Human Resources Department. The subject, approval of Galt Public Service Unit Memorandum of Understanding with revised salary schedule, unrepresented employee revised salary schedule, and third amendment of, to the city manager and city attorney employment contract. Follow that to you. Mayor, if I could just do oh, okay. a brief introduction, oh. and I'll right. turn it over to Paula. I just wanted to first uh, recognize Steve Rudolph, who's lead negotiator in the discussions and negotiations, as well as Paula Eastless, our human resources administrator, for the excellent job they did, uh, really, as well as the representatives from GPSU, those that were on the negotiating team, as well as the labor reps. Um, I really felt like the uh, discussions were very constructive. We really appreciate the GPSU and all the hard work that they, that they give for the City of Galt. I know the last five years have been challenging for the City of Galt and the budget uh, deficits and so forth that we've had, and we appreciated them coming forward during those years and, and, uh, and had some concessions as far as furloughs and contributing more to their, their PERS and so forth. It's been since 2009 that employees have had cost of living adjustments, so it's been a long haul. So while the recommendations tonight are, are modest as far as uh, giving something back to our employees because financially the city is still um, trying to you know, come out of the recession that we've been in, we feel good that we're at least able to offer something and get back to some cost of living and some, some things to recognize the good hard work that our, our employees give on a daily basis. So I'll ask Paula to give you guys just a brief summary of the highlights from the contracts, but I at least wanted to mention those items. Thank you. I'll just go over a uh, brief of uh, the highlights, of, as Jason mentioned. And for our GPSU MOU, um, one thing that we're really happy about is that we have a three and a half year contract. So it will be effective July 1 through December 31st of 2017. So even though it was a good productive process, we won't have to do it for a few years. Um, so that's exciting. Um, GPS unit um, has already become an agency shop. We put this in the highlights just to let everyone know that um, it is just being memorialized in the MOU. Um, cost of living adjustments are 2% for this year, effective July 1. And um, we will have a COLA July 1, 2015 and 16. Those are not a set amount. There's a range, and um, the COLAs will depend upon what the CPI is for the previous year. In July 2017, the employees will receive a 4% increase to their salary, but they will also then begin contributing 5% to their CalPERS 
retirement. So what that means is they will be paying their full employee share of the 7% for the CAUSIC members. So there's a little bit of a, a trade-off there. Um, we will also be um, giving or compensating employees $50 per month, those that are um, have bilingual skills that um, are needed in, in various departments. And another big change is that we'll be observing, observing Martin Luther King Day in 2015, um, but we will no longer be observing um, Admissions Day. So uh, next Tuesday will be our last Admissions Day. Um, let's see, benefits, the employees, medical insurance premiums, um, contribution amounts, um, the city's contribution amount, excuse me, will not change January 2015, uh, but effective January 1, 2016, the city will be increasing their contribution amount. And we've also made a change in the waiver. Those employees that do not take medical, they waive, um, there will be a change in the waiver amount, and they will also be waiving their dental contributions as well. The unrepresented agreement is basically the same, um, pretty much identical except for the fact that they will um, have a change in their administrative leave. Managers, uh, department heads currently earn 80 hours admin leave. That will increase to 100 per fiscal year. And mid-managers will be increasing from 40 hours to 70 hours. And that reminds me that I wanted to let you know in front of you there is an amended resolution. There are a couple of changes. Um, I had originally submitted the resolution that said mid-managers um, will be increasing to 80. But again, it, as the staff report says, it's only 70 hours. And then also, um, to coincide with the city's pay periods, even though the COLA this year is beginning July 1, we'd like to actually make it effective June 30th um, because that would be the beginning of a pay period and it's just one day and it, it would help with the, um, just the record keeping of everything. Are there any questions that I can answer for you? And we, we, we would like to say that there aren't any questions because we've been studying this for a long time and Steve has been working for a long time and we've been in closed session and I think that all of us all, all around are very happy with the results of this. So we want to thank you guys for your hard work. So Liz, uh, would you like to read the recommended action, please? OK, adopt the resolution as amended from what Paula said. Number one, approving the memorandum of understanding with the Galt Public Service Unit for the period of July 1, 2014 through December 31, 2017 with a revised salary schedule. Number two, authorizing the city manager to execute the GPSU, what's called Public Services Unit, MOU. Number three, approving the salary schedules for all unrepresented positions, reflecting a 2% cost of living adjustment, effective July 1, 2014, and cost of living adjustments in 2015 and 2016, and an increase in the PERS contribution by employees and number four, approving the third amendment to the city manager and city attorney employment contract. Do I have a motion? Motion approved. Second? second. Kurt second. So Mark second. Mark, Mark second. Oh, Mark second. <laughs> Sorry. Call for the vote, please. Vice Mayor Singleton? Aye. Councilmember Payne? Aye. Councilmember Campion? Aye. Councilmember Cruz? Aye. Mayor Powers? Aye. Unanimous. Unanimous. Okay, now we're at the uh, Community Development Department, the Planning Commission Annual Report to the City Council. Hello, Mr. Sandu. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Paul Sandu. First of all, I would like to thank you, all of the Planning Commissioner, for giving me the opportunity to serve as a chairperson on the Planning Commission. I would also like to thank you, Ken Erickson, his time on the commission, and I'd also like to welcome Lori Huber as the replacement of uh, Ken Erickson. And I'd also like to welcome uh, Community Development Director, Tony Stewart, who uh, is on the uh, planning department. Uh, the commission would also like to thank you for City Council, City Manager, City Attorney and Planning Department for the effort and support over the past years. 
the planning commission plays an important role in ensuring the continued growth and success of the city. We all are dedicated to review plans for future activities and developments while complying with the zoning ordinance. Past year has been a busy one for planning commission and we are looking forward to more productive and busy productive in 2014-2015 year. It is my honor to present the 2013-2014 annual report to the Planning Commission of the City of Cork. The report will outline the Commission activities throughout the fiscal year. Now I would like to turn over to Community Development Director Tony Stewart to discuss in further detail of the report. Thanks for everyone again. Thank you. Can I, interje can I interject one second, please? Along with Lori and you, Paul, I think we should mention that Alfredo Rodriguez, Craig Morris, and Bob Dees is on the commission. Thank you, Thank you. Chair Sandu. Thank you, Paul. Um, just uh, very quickly here, uh, the Golf Planning Commission consists of the five members, uh, which were appointed by this, that each council member. And the commission holds regularly scheduled meetings on the second Thursday of the month here in the council chambers at 6.30 p.m. The primary purpose of the planning commission, as uh, Chair Sandy mentioned, was to review matters uh, dealing with planning and uh, land development uh, matters. Um, for instance, applications, maybe general plan and zoning uh, amendments, conditional use permits, tentative maps, variances, etc. Specifically, the, uh, the Planning Commission annually reviews the general plan to make recommendations regarding general plan implementation, which is pretty much the Bible that uh, the Planning Department and the uh, Planning Commission operate by. They annually report the city's, uh, review the city's uh, CIP or Capital Improvement Program. They act upon and make recommendations uh, to the City Council on land use matters. And they also perform other functions as set forth in the Municipal Code and also as brought forth by the uh, Council. And as uh, the Mayor mentioned, we do have the five commissioners, which are Chair Sandhu, our Vice Chair, Mr. Rodriguez, and Commissioners Bob Dees, Lori Dewar, and Craig Morris. And then Planning Commission, of course, does have staff, uh, staff support. Um, by the, the planning department in particular, which would be myself, Chris Arias, who's here also to answer any questions since uh, he's been here longer than I have with regard to this, or at least the last few years, um, and our new recording secretary, Tina Barclay. But we're also uh, regularly supported by our civil, senior civil engineer, Bill Forrest, and our city attorney, Steve Rudolph. So as uh, the chairman mentioned, uh, we were fairly busy last year and with development picking up, we expect to be even busier this year. And uh, some of the projects that the Planning Commission worked on last year uh, were to uh, review the, uh, the annual report for the general plan. They also uh, recommended approval of the, uh, the new housing element uh, to the council uh, earlier this year, which was uh, a big undertaking and won't need to be done now for another eight years. They also uh, worked on a couple of zone uh, text amendments and made recommendations favorably to the council, and that was for our reasonable accommodation ordinance, and also an amendment to the downtown specific plan to allow additional areas for wine tasting, uh, with our new uh, first wine tasting room coming in here shortly. They also worked on or made decisions on several uh, commercial and residential projects, such as uh, the Simmerhorn and Chevron stations. Uh, the uh, McDonald's sign that will eventually uh, be erected up there at uh, Twin Cities and the 99 uh, off-ramp. Um, and then also they worked on several residential projects, a couple of bigger ones being Chancellor Estates and Creekside 4 with regard to architectural review, um, but they also had several other applications brought forth as well. And finally, the Commission also uh, regularly gets uh, training. Uh, especially when we may have a, a light agenda. And so uh, for uh, three meetings uh, past year, uh, the city attorney uh, introduced rules, procedures, and best practices. 
Um, and then I also presented uh, a, a presentation on a specific things which you also heard. And then finally, uh, Chair Sand, who attended uh, the Planning Commissioners at that meeting uh, this past March. And with that, uh, that concludes my report. And uh, like I said, uh, staff and uh, the chair are here to answer any questions you may have. Questions, Council? No? Okay, well, thank you very much for the report. And it does look like you guys have been quite busy this year. Okay, now we're at the um, Culture and Recreation <coughs> Department accepting electronic benefit transfer EBT cards at the Galt's Market. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. As promised, uh, staff will be presenting this um, staff report. Uh, we'll actually be having Kimberly Paulson, the market manager, presenting the information to you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Bear with me as this is my first time here. Um, I'm going to go over the staff report just in brief, and then if you have any questions at the end, please feel free to ask them. In January 2014, at a strategic planning session, staff was tasked with the feasibility of accepting EBT cards as a way to improve the financial stability at the market. EBT, EBT cards are electronic benefit transfer cards uh, that automate the delivery of public assistance known in the state of California as CalFresh. In the 95632 zip code alone, there are approximately 1,350 households that actually receive the benefits that would be local and easily accessible to the flea market. Staff contacted Alchemist Community Development Corporation, which is a nonprofit that currently operates CalFresh payment processing at local farmers markets to find out if they would be interested in operating a similar program at the market. Alchemist is interested and proposed a program that would cost an, estimate, an estimated $20,550 per fiscal year. This will include oversight of the program, staffing of the payment processing booth, processing of payments to vendors, market script, and supplies. Staff also conducted a survey of all the produce vendors to gauge interest in the EBT program. There was an overwhelming response in favor of it at 73% of our vendors were wanting the program and also willing to pay another $1.50 per space per day in order to help fund the program. The increase to the produce space will help generate approximately $15,000 per year to help fund the program, with the remaining $5,550 to be paid by the city. The city's portion may decrease if the program is successful, as we hope it will be, and brings in more produce vendors to the market. Although the program costs more than it will generate in revenue, it may attract new customers and allow current customers that receive EBT benefits to use that money for produce and spend more money on the other vendors at the market. The staff report was also taken to the Parks and Rec Commission and they recommended that you accept the staff's recommendations with a three to zero vote. And that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you very much. We do have one public comment, so we'll have that first. Uh, Mr. Hansen, you're up again. Once again, my name is Daniel Hansen. Um, I have looked into this uh, quite a bit. Uh, my family is good friends with the Denial family. And they have said not only does it keep money in Roseville to Roseville for the CalFresh, because you get local farmers that are able to sell more of their products here. So the, the money would stay here in Galt instead of letting our money, right now a lot of our money is going, well a lot of the EBT money is going to Sacramento City because the farmer's market does accept EBT cards. We do not at, at this time and I think this would be one of the best things that the city council could vote on and make it. Uh, unanimous to bring into the city of Galt because it will not only help the local farmers but it will also help the people that are on CalFresh so that they can get their products locally. Thank you very much. Thank you and I think that's why Armando looked into it. Thank you very much. It took a little bit of work but we're getting it here. Uh, city Council? Questions? Um, Armando or um, which, whichever one. Um, is there a reason that the full cost of the program wasn't uh, offered to the to the produce vendors? I mean, it, I understand the concept of generating, you know, additional um, uh, interest in the market. 
um, but the specific benefit goes to the produce vendor, not necessarily the city. I mean, it, it may be tangential uh, in terms of additional individuals, but there's no direct benefit to the city that I see. We, we did look at, at the full cost being um, taken on by the produce vendors. This is just one that we felt that the best way was, would be to partner in with them and try and increase more of our vendors, uh, the money to go to be spread around. So now they'll have cash in hand to use in other vendor spots, not necessarily produce spots. The money that they were using to buy produce, now they can use uh, at the market at other vendor spaces. That, uh, would, that, be the, that, that is, would be the hopeful That That product. is the hope, yes. Yeah. Um, there is an option, there is an alternative to uh, for council to vote for the full funding of the program at 250, excuse me, two dollars per space. Uh, that is not staff's recommendation. Uh, we just feel that we should partnership partner with the uh, vendors to bring this program forward. How many uh, produce vendor spaces are available today? Uh, should additional vendors want to come to the market? Approximately 20 on Tuesday and 15 on Wednesday. And what's the likelihood of filling those spots? I, we would try and recruit some. Now we're open to the farmers market. Farmers, the actual farmers, not the produce vendors that are reselling produce. Uh, we can go out and recruit more of the farmers market now that we have this also. Uh, the ones that are form or selling at the other markets that Alchemist is um, um, running the program with. We can try and recruit some of those vendors to come to our market also to sell. I think uh, we really looked at this $5,000 city money as an investment in the market. We're trying to really solidify the market and this is kind of like an advertising campaign because we're going to be spreading the word that we now accept EBT cards. We're going to be putting in the newspaper, we're going to be advertising at other locations, so hopefully we'll, we'll get more people coming out to the market. Mm -hmm. We're going to spend their money out there, again, just strengthening the market. So I think for a, for a $5,000 investment, it, it made sense from our standpoint. I think it made it easier for them to go out and try to sell it to the vendors that the city was going to be contributing in some way. We weren't putting it all on the vendors' backs. And even at that, we still, I mean, we got 73, 76 percent. I think if we had tried to go in at $2, those numbers probably would have fallen. And so I, we tried to kind of, I think, do a compromise or somewhere in between. I think the majority of it is being paid for by the vendors, but the city does have a small contribution, which I think uh, hopefully we'll see <coughs> made back. No, I, I think, you know, in general, it's, it's a good program. Um, you know, it benefits, you know, potentially the market, uh, certainly the produce vendors area farmers mm -hmm. and, you know, most of all the, the residents who use the EBT. Um, I guess I would like to see, let's say at the end of a, of a trial period of a year, financially how did this work out? Did we pick up more produce vendors? Um, did we lose produce vendors? Uh, it, you know, I can see a trial period of, you know, one year or, or some period of time, whatever you think uh, would be appropriate. but. Um, I wouldn't want it to just see it continue on and, and, and we end up, you know, it ends up costing us uh, based on increases because I suspect that the, that the contract is based on the number of vendors that they would be serving or estimated transactions. Is that it? No, no it is not. That is fully funded regardless of how many vendors participate in the program. Oh, so it doesn't matter based on the number of vendors? No, it does not. Hmm. The only way then the city would end up be costing the city money is if you lose vendors. Correct. Okay. And we're confident we, we will not lose vendors okay. with this program. Okay. Well, with that, I'd, I'd uh, motion for approval. Oh, wait. We, just we have, have, we have a couple okay. over here that I'd like to pick up. Okay. Um, to you, Council Member Payne. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let me just say that I am very excited that we're hoping to do this. At a time, and I've spoke on this before, when childhood obesity is, is at, at such a high rate, which leads to diabetes, uh, if we can make fresh vegetables more available to the people in the community, that's the best uh, thing that we can do as a city council for the, for the good of the people that live in this city. I think, I thought before that it was um, so strange that we didn't offer um, 
I'm going to call them food stamps, to be used to produce, for produce, which is uh, what we want our people to, to um, spend their uh, food stamps on more than anything else. So I think maybe if you just look at the numbers, you may not see what you want, I think you will. But I think overall the community has an opportunity to be healthier, which all trickles down to how much money are we going to spend on health uh, benefits and uh, illness. So I guess I'm talking uh, a lot about something that you can't see, that you can't uh, put a number to, but I'm really proud that our community is this concerned about the wellness of their, of their citizens. So I'm very uh, supportive of this plan. To you. I'm done. Okay. I just want to make sure. To you, Vice Mayor. Um, Mr. Solis, in your staff report, I see, and you mentioned it also, is that uh, it's a dollar fifty per space uh, extra to help pay for this. Is that, uh, I mean, per week or or per month? What is? I don't even know. Space is per month. It's per space per day. Per day. Oh, oh okay, okay, per day. And so I assume. Um, when they go to these these cards, then that that cost of that machine is going to be on the vendor. Is that correct? The the cost is included for the processing of the script. Well, um, don't they have to slide the card? No, actually, let me uh, go into how how the, this uh, program will actually work. Okay. The partic the participant would uh, take their EBT card to a booth. Oh, okay. Swipe the card there, which is that's where Alchemist staff would be. Um, they would then ex say, I'd like to exchange this for $20, $30, $40 oh. a script. Uh, okay. They would provide them script that is only good at the Galt market. Good. The vendors would accept the script and then at the end of the day or the following week, turn this back into the Alchemist staff. Staff would give them a receipt and then mail them a check um, once a month. Okay. Um, okay. Any unused script can be turned back into Alchemist and the money will be put back onto the participant for the EBT card. Oh, wow. Awesome. Good that's, that's all the question I had. Thank you. Thank you very much. And just one thing, I want to go back. Uh, a while back we did open up more lanes to have more produce and we did get more produce vendors in there, correct? So We, we opened it up to Tuesday. Uh, we did uh, have vendors in there. Uh, we're not completely full, but I'm hoping to get them. Oh, good. That's, that's very good. Okay, do I have a Liz? Sorry, would you mind reading it for us? One last question. Oh, okay. On the, uh, in here, didn't I read in here that they're looking to have volunteer staff a, a portion of the Alchemist contract? Yes, we, we've asked Alchemist to um, look into having volunteers man this, um, the booth to try and reduce the cost. Uh, they couldn't guarantee volunteers in this area because we're so south in the county, right. but they said that they would be willing to, to recruit and try and find some. So if we do find some volunteers that are willing to come down and be part of the Alchemist program, they'd be uh, employees of, of Alchemist and uh, come and run the program. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Council, anyone else? Okay, do, uh, could you read it please, Les? Adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with Alchemist Community Development Corporation to operate a CalFresh payment processing program at the Galt Market and adjusting the Galt Market produ produce <laughs> rental fee. Number two, approve the budget change forms appropriating funds in the amount of $12,000 in fiscal year 2014-15, which would be December 2014 through June 2015, and $20,550 in fiscal year 2015-16 to operate the CalFresh payment processing program and recognizing estimated revenues of $8,750 and $15,000 respectively. Do I have a motion? Move the item. Second. Second. Okay. Call for the vote please, Liz. Vice Mayor Singleton? Aye. Councilmember Payne? Aye. Aye. Councilmember Campion? Aye. Councilmember Cruz? Aye. Mayor Power? Aye. Approved five to zero. Unanimous. Thank you. Unanimous. You're welcome. Okay, now at the Public Works Department, approval of California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, statutory ex 
exemption and award of contract for the Simmerhorn Carillion Water Main project. Madam Mayor and Council Members, uh, we have three items uh, of recommendation tonight related to award of a construction contract for the Simmerhorn Carillion Water Main project. Uh, those three recommendations would be to uh, authorize the city manager to execute a construction agreement with Martin General Engineering in the amount of $647,000. Six, I'm sorry, $647,646.50. Also, that you'd authorize a 10% uh, uh, contingency amount of $64,764.50, and that would be to address any unanticipated construction issues that might arise during the project. And lastly, that you'd authorize the Public Works Director to accept the improvements uh, and issue a notice of completion upon satisfactory completion of the work. And at this point, I would ask Mr. Bill Forrest to give you a real quick overview of what the project consists of. Good evening, Madam Mayor and City Council members. Bill Forrest with your City of Gulf Public Works staff. Uh, this project is a, about a little shy of a mile connecting uh, existing water mains at the intersection of Box Hall Avenue and Carillion Boulevard and an existing water main at the city limits at Silverhorn where it goes to an east-west direction. Uh, the water main will be a 12-inch main with valving and um, studs for future connections for such as uh, fire hydrants or development uh, associated with the general plan. The 12-inch main is identified in the uh, water distribution system uh, master plan that was uh, approved by the council back in May of 2010. This project was added to the CIP as a way to facilitate econ uh, development of what is referred to as a some more commercial property in that uh, gives them a two points of source uh, for that development and then the utilities division of the public works department uh, requested uh, advancement of this project to help facilitate capacity from the east side as well as the west side in that there's a, a few crossings of highway 99 and by adding this main this gives a more direct route to a, uh, one of the crossings underneath Highway 99. So depending on pressures and whatnot, water can be more easily moved from west to east or east to west, depending on the demands. The work will be mostly uh, just at the edge of the pavement. So there will be lane closures and uh, and if necessary, uh, uh, closures, but right now the anticipation with traffic control, there will be just a lane closure for them to allow to do work because um, we don't, as there are limited east-west connectors across Highway 9 for the city, we don't want to uh, closures, but it will depend on uh, the work effort of the contractor, but that, that is our goal, to at least have a lane with appropriate traffic control um, during the work process. It'll take approximately about two months um, to construct the project. Do you have any questions? I'm just curious, looking at the diagram... We always look at Mr. Cameron, I'm sorry. Looking at the diagram, it, it appears as though on Carillion it would be on the west side and then on the south side of Simmerhorn. Is that generally correct or not? Generally not correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to the it's first. A, it's a blue line added uh, in PowerPoint. Uh, for the segment along Carillion, yes, it will be on the, along the west side of Carillion Boulevard. The uh, alignment along several horn will actually be at the north edge of pavement. And why? What, what the reason? For, is there a specific reason? I'm just curious. Uh, 
in that uh, there were multiple master plans done to facilitate the general plan development of this, what is referred to as the notch area. So uh, there are standards where, for example, water main is pl a water main is placed in the roadway, and so we also had to work out, okay, where are we going to put future sewer main? Where are we going to put future storm drainage? And so that was a compromise in terms of the standards in place, uh, these future ultimate improvements. Uh, it was kind of, if you will, splitting the baby in terms of the impacts to the existing residents along the Sermerhorn, and that approximately half the residents live on the north side and approximately live on the south side, you know, depending where you're at along the segment. So um, that's why the north side was uh, ultimately decided upon and desi designed to. For, are these like future uh, utility complex? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Council? Okay. Uh, did you? Sure. Come on up. Rick Walters, thank you very much. Is this going to be paid by Capital Water? Uh, this is being paid not through water fees of users, but through um, uh, developer impact fees. So it's Capital Water. Uh, that, I believe that's the name of our budget, yes. Have you looked into redevelopment money? Uh, we have not at this time in that there's nothing to redevelop here. So you're not going to develop this or redevelop it at all? Yeah, I don't believe that redevelopment funds could be used for new uh, development that, uh, you know, lacks an existing historic. That and the fact that we're struggling to be able to even access redevelopment funds, okay. that was not considered a viable option in the short run. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome, Rick. Thanks, Rick. Uh, okay, uh, Liz, do you mind reading the action? Yes. Okay, sorry. No, that's okay. Bumbling. Okay, adopt a resolution to number one, authorize the city manager to execute a contract with Martin General Engineering in the amount of $647,646.50 for the construction of the Simmerhorn Carillion Water Main Project, CIT 53G. Number two, authorize a supplemental contingency of $64,764.50 to address unanticipated construction issues. And number three, authorize the Public Works Director to accept the improvements and issue a notice of completion upon completion of the work. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Call for the vote, please, Liz. Vice Mayor Singleton? Aye. Councilmember Payne? Aye. Councilmember Campion? Aye. Councilmember Cruz? Aye. Mayor Powers? Aye. Unanimous? Okay. So now we're down to communication, and that's back to you, Liz, with the city clerk's report. Just a few reminders. Okay. On September 8th, the Galt Youth Committee will be meeting at 6 p.m. in the council chambers. On September 9th, uh, city offices will be closed in honor of Admissions Day. On September 10th, the Parks and Recreation Commission meeting will be held in the Council Chambers at 7 p.m. On September 11th, the Planning Commission meeting will be held at 6.30 p.m. in the Council Chambers. And that takes us to our next City Council meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Liz. Okay, comments by staff. I'll start over here. Anyone? Um, as you notice, we're in progress. Several people commented on uh, some uh, media upgrades uh, through grant funding uh, to the council chambers. Uh, that work isn't done. Still got projectories that are being hooked up and uh, ultimately uh, uh, have a little bit more work to do. But uh, again, this is being uh, funded through efforts uh, uh, using community funding uh, to help enhance the uh, viewing uh, capabilities for people that are watching this over the Comcast network. So that work will be completed here shortly and want to call that to your attention as well as uh, note that um, just got numbers this morning for our August water production 
and uh, I think the citizens are taking seriously water conservation. Um, we're pleased to report that uh, month to month between this year and last year, we have met the 20% reduction for this okay. current month, cool. uh, just passed, and uh, that's the lowest August water usage the city's seen in 14 years. So I'd like to send out a thank you to uh, not only our staff, but to the residents that are taking it seriously and helping us meet those goals of reducing water use. Thank you. Mr. Stewart? It's just a couple of things real quick. We have a new uh, building inspector on board, Ross Lovato, started uh, today actually. So you may see him out and about uh, shortly here. And just also I'll be at the planning commission instead of uh, down south with you by the following week. So I'll uh, have Chris here probably at the next uh, council meeting. Okay. Uh, I am. I'm going around. Oh, I, didn't think <laughs> I guess. So you, Armando. I just want to let the council know and the citizens that we're back in our building. Uh, we've moved okay. in over the weekend. I'd like to thank uh, Steve and his uh, staff to, for moving us in. Uh, so we're open for business at the front counter and um, appreciate uh, having those offices now that we've been, uh, we have been displaced for those several months. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Good. Good. Chief? Nothing to report. Jason? Steve? Then we'll just keep going right along. <laughs> Council Member Campion. I was just uh, noticing the new entry landscaping. It looks very nice. It does. Staff, staff did that. Did a nice job. Yeah, it does look good, huh? Yeah. Um, Council Member Chris. Oh, good. Uh, well, premature news at this point. The final will come up on September 18th. But um, the City of Galt has been recommended for an $8.5 million grant for uh, safe routes to school. And this is through the Sacramento Area Council of Governments. And come September 18th, uh, the board will be deciding yes or no on it. And it looks good. And you're not going to miss that meeting, are you? Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> it's the start meeting. OK. Council Member Kane. Oh, just want to remind everybody to come out to Walker Park uh, on the 6th to celebrate nope. country in the park. No, no, uh, the Dairy Association, no, no, no. we're recognizing them and they're bringing their classroom trailer out with lots of information about where the milk comes from <laughs> and why it's good. And there are also, for some, there'll be the Liberty Junction band playing. Uh, there'll be lots of vendors, um, activities for the young kids. Uh, so come on out to our newest park and enjoy it. And it's free. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun last year, so it just gets better every year. Yeah, so looking was. forward Thank to being there. Thank you. I just wanted to say I hope everybody had a good uh, holiday weekend. That's all I thought. Well, I did. Good. Yeah, yeah. What'd you I, do? Know you. I went to Las Vegas. Oh, I had fun. Okay, with that, we're going to close the meeting.